Hey Gone Jeepin, it's Liam again, and we're here at the Sprint Tex booth with Jay. We're gonna be talking about something that I love, which is superchargers. Jay, so let's, uh, we'll get into this Jeep here in just a minute here, but let's talk briefly about Sprint Tex as a company, what you guys do. Uh, Sprint Tex as a company has been around for 40 years. We originated out of the UK. We're uh, now headquartered in Australia. We have our main manufacturing in Malaysia, and we have our development, assembly, and distribution center in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Awesome. So we're standing in front of a Jeep today, but I assume you put superchargers on all kinds of different vehicles? Absolutely. We, we make basically clean air compressors, which can be used as superchargers and have mainly been used as superchargers. We do a lot of Jeep product, but we do some other products, Toyotas. Um, we've done the BMW Minis and Hondas and different things like that. But primarily here, the probably the main interest for the U.S. is the uh, Jeep market. All the way back into the TJs, we, you know, we used to do XJ, but we don't do it anymore. We do the 4-liter TJ and LJs. We have stopped doing the 7 to 11 JK because the motors are becoming unreliable as they get older and the trans. We're very, very developed in the 12 to 18 JKs. We have nearly 4,000 of those around the world. Um, and now we've transitioned on into the 18 to 22 JLJT range. That's awesome. So I got to ask, what was the first car you guys started with? What was the first car that your supercharger went on? That's a good question. It was a probably an English Ford. Very cool. All right, well, this is a Jeep channel, so let's talk about Jeeps for a minute. So you mentioned a lot of Jeeps that we know and love. There is one that you left out, though. Why no supercharger for the four-cylinder? Because there's really no, no market for it. The, the problem we have is that it's the high cost of development of a, of a truly professional system. And to justify that, we have to have a certain level of, of volume in the market. And four cylinder just doesn't have that. Right. You know, we, we've often looked at it because we absolutely know that we can um, we can do a lot for four cylinders, and we've done a lot of four cylinder supercharging in time. It's one of our specialties. But realistically, the number of people who are gonna come here with a four cylinder and want one is very minimal. Yeah, and that's something I know from experience too. So I have a four cylinder Jeep, and every supercharger on the market was, it would cost more for the supercharger than for me to buy another Jeep, yeah. because the four cylinders are just a little bit less desirable. And so that's where my knowledge base comes in. I developed my own kit. <laughs> Chris says that I'm your competitor, and that's not even remotely true. Um, so, no, what do we have? You're, you're the yeah, that's right. So, what do we have under the hood here? Um, you know, what what type of displacement is this supercharger okay. giving us? What I would say about this: this is our latest 3.6 Pentastar system. We we consider it the Generation Two. The Generation Two, which you may have seen around, the supercharger was slanted off to the side. And the reason for that, it was a rear entry supercharger. Specifically for JLJT, we developed a front entry supercharger, which is what's different about the Gen 2, which allowed us to bring it up central on top of the motor, kind of like a supercharger should be. It's aesthetically more pleasing, it's more efficient, and it's quieter. Um, this supercharger is about one and a half liters per revolution in size. It's ideal size for this motor. Um, it's able to pr provide basically the same performance as a 392 Hemi. So That's amazing. It is. And you know, we can show that because we have supercharged many models that had the V6 Panastar, the Challengers, Chargers, 300, Grand Cherokee, all of those, that all came with an option for 5.7 or 6.4. And I can tell you, you can take a, a six-cylinder Challenger the stock 268 gears and it's stock wheels and tires and stock mufflers go to the racetrack with our supercharger and beat an SRT Hemi. That's great. And I noticed you said it's uh, 1.5? It's 1.5 liters per revolution, which is an ideal size for this motor right. in that it allows us to have a drive ratio that gives us very good torque. So at 1,000 RPM, this adds 50 foot-pounds of torque over stock. 2,000 RPM adds 100 foot-pounds of torque over stock. That's very important if you're a rock crawler, if you're playing in the sand or in the mud. Everybody knows if it won't get going, you can't do it. 
So that's the, really the advantage we have over every other power out of a Jeep. Yeah, absolutely. And being a super supercharger, you're going to get that torque early on rather than like a turbo. Um, so I see the kit here. If I was to go and purchase one of these today, am I getting everything included? We've got the accessory belt, the piping, tuning, all of that, or uh, how does that all work? Anybody that's had experience of our systems would know that our ma main ethos is that we supply every nut, bolt, washer, and screw, even the zip ties. We don't ask anybody to drill a hole, cut anything, bend anything, weld anything, change anything. If, a, if an existing part doesn't fit, we supply a new part that does fit. So we truly supply absolutely bolt-on performance. It's 100% reversible. If you keep your takeout parts, you can take it back off and put on your next Jeep. That's awesome. And being someone who designs parts, I can tell you that making a completely bolt on is it's a lot of work. It's a lot of R&D. And that's really impressive if you can pull that off. Yeah, and, and that's what I was mentioning before about the four cylinder, the amount of R&D and development and, and tooling and molding that has to go into it, you know, has to be warranted by the how many of them there are and how many people need it. You know, and exactly. Everybody that has a Jeep, as soon as they put accessories, bigger wheels, they need it. They don't, and one particular benefit is with our supercharger, because you have that lower end torque, you don't have to put gears in it. If you, are, if you have nothing bigger than 37s, you can run stock diff gears in it. And that, of course, is going to save you enough money to buy a supercharger anyway. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and then uh, the last question is on tuning. So what, what do people usually use to tune their engine now that you've got this on here? Typically everything we offer is carb compliant. <coughs> so we are carb compliant until 2019 currently. We're pending on the later ones already. Um, so from 12 to 18, we offer with Diablo tuning. Um, 18 onwards, we're currently working with HP tuners. Um, that may change. Basically, as most cheap people would know, the, the, PCM tuning side of it is complex for Jeeps and, and it depends a little bit on who has the best ability to, to do what we need to do and currently that's why we, we have moved to HP for the 18 to 22 because they have a better handle on that than some of the other guys do at the moment but that changes every day. I did hear recently that Diablo may have a solution for the, the new GPEC 5 so it's going to change everything. Awesome. All right. Well, we've got this is one of the more technical videos that we've done out here at SEMA. And of course, I'm loving it because this is the kind of stuff that I get into. OK, so this is actually the kit we were just looking at, but it's all pulled out on a stand. And I'm going to do my best to repeat back what you taught me about this kit. And uh, we'll, yeah, like you said, we'll test my comprehension skills. So this is the supercharger right here. That one was easy. Um, the throttle body is in front of it. And what's cool about that, which is something I didn't do on my own kit, is you still have vacuum when you put the throttle body before the supercharger. It's gonna be a lot simpler and easier to tune as well, if I remember right. Below here, you're replacing the whole intake manifold, which is great because you're not trying to adapt to the OEM part. You're just gonna replace it and it'll bolt right on. But there's also an intercooler hiding inside of there. Right. And that's huge in terms of your efficiency and performance. Absolutely. And you guys are providing the bigger injectors as well, which is really nice, so we don't have to go out and get those. And then we'll look down here you're telling me that this is the pump for the intercooler because it is a water to air, which is even more efficient than the air to air. And then uh, you're telling me about this one here. This is the one I, I forgot about. It looks like a factory part. It's the EGR, uh, so exhaust gas recirculation tube. All of the later model vehicles have to have that for EPA. So as you say, that looks like a factory part. It's not, and that's because the stock part doesn't fit. In the same way around the front here, you can see the alternator bracket, same thing. The stock bracket don't fit, so we send you one that does. The original fuel lines don't fit, so we provide one to do. The emission lines, same thing. They look like factory parts, but they are absolutely a, our part that, that has the same function as a factory part, but fits exactly in the vehicle. So you don't have to cut something, bend it, weld it, join it, anything. We just plug it in. Right, and I mean, all the way down to, I see a, a sensor on here. I mean, everything that you need is provided. Is that a map sensor? That is a map sensor. And as I said before, every nut, bolt, washer, and screw, we even give you the zip ties. And so I assume this is able to read at the higher boost levels now. Correct. 
Right. The, oh, right. the factory map sensor can only read to one atmosphere. That one can read to two and a half. Perfect. Okay, so we're not going to talk so much about this next one, but I do want to show it off to you guys because as a Jeep nut, this supercharger is for the 4.0. Look at how cool this is. So this will bolt right on to your inline six in a, LJ, a number. LJ. Yeah. Yep. LJ, TJ, XJ, will it fit on the XJ? It will, but it doesn't fit under the hood of an XJ. We used to do a um, specific XJ, XJ system that did fit under the hood, but this one does not, so you would have to modify the hood. Okay, and the last question I have for you is, for the guys back at home that are doing this, What's something like this going to run on cost-wise? For earlier, four liter is thirty nine ninety five. The later one comes with uh, computer tuning, so it's going to be forty six ninety five. For these other Jeeps, um, for the latest eighteen to twenty two, sixty nine ninety five, and for the twelve to eighteen JKs, sixty six ninety five. And of course, the next question is, what's your show price? Well, if you're not at the show, you're not getting it. <laughs> I thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. All right. All right, guys, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll plug myself. Go over to Jeep Sheep TV and see the dumb stuff that I did to my Jeep if you're curious as to how I pulled off a supercharger for under $1,000 every nut, bolt, and screw. See you guys later.